Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Marcellus in Froganacci. Snack time's over, so it's time to continue our study of rational numbers. In this lesson, we're going to compare and order them. Today's learning objective. Students will compare and order rational numbers by using a number line, converting between fractions and decimals, applying knowledge of integers, and applying knowledge of real-world situations. There's no new vocabulary, so let's get right to the first problem. Okay, Froganacci? In our first problem, let's compare negative 1 and 4 tenths to negative 1 and 25 hundredths. Just as we did when comparing integers, the first thing we want to do is check the signs on the numbers. Since both of these are negative, we'll have to look at the problem a little more closely. We also need to remember that when working with negative numbers, we have to kind of think in the opposite directions. A number line can be a handy tool when comparing rational numbers, just as it was when comparing integers. We can graph both of these on the number line, and we can see that negative 1 and 25 hundredths is closer to zero, so that would be the greater value. When graphing the values on a number line, you can use either a vertical or a horizontal number line. Both of them are just tools to help you compare. Another thing that we can do is add a zero to the negative 1 and 4 tenths so that both numbers are in the hundredth spot we can easily see that negative 40 would be less than negative 25. In any case, 1 and 4 tenths is less than 1 and 25 hundredths. Let's compare two fractions. If I look at negative 3 eighths and negative 5 sixteenths, I can see that they're both negative, so I'm going to have a little extra work to do. When we previously compared fractions, we did so by using their cross product. This will work for negative fractions as well. We can multiply the denominator of 1 times the numerator of the other, so 8 times 5 is 40. However, since the fraction on this side is negative, that's a negative 40. We multiply 16 times 3 and get 48, and again, it's negative. So now we're comparing negative 48 to negative 40. Negative 48 is less than negative 40, so that means negative 3 eighths is less than negative 5 sixteenths. That's one way to approach the problem. Another thing that you could do, probably not the easiest route, is to turn both of the fractions into decimals. We do this by dividing the numerator by the denominator, and on the left we end up with 375 thousandths, and of course that's negative. And on the right, we end up with 3,125 ten thousandths, and that is negative as well. In order to compare these, I will add a zero to the left side, so they're both in the ten thousandths spot. And again, we can see that the value on the left is less than the value on the right. Let's compare negative five ninths and negative fifty-seven hundredths. Because they are both negative, we're going to have to take a closer look. Probably the easiest thing to do is to convert the fraction of negative 5 ninths to a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. When we do this, we get negative 0 0.5 repeating. Since the value on the right is to the hundredths place, I'm just going to write two of the fives. I compare negative 55 with negative 57. Negative 55 is slightly closer to 0 and a little bit further to the right on the number line, so negative 5 ninths is greater than negative 57 hundredths. I could also write negative 57 hundredths as the fraction negative 57 over 100. I then would cross multiply and I get 500 on this side and that would be a negative 500. And on the other side, I have 9 times 57, which is 513, and that also would be negative. Negative 500 is larger than negative 513, so negative 5 ninths is greater than negative 57 hundredths. Next, let's compare negative 3 and 4 fifths to negative 3 and 8 tenths. 
Again, uh, they're both negative, so I'm going to have to look at them a little bit more closely, and probably the easiest thing to do is turn the fraction into a decimal. If I divide 4 by 5, I get a result of negative 3 and 8 tenths. Now I can easily see that they are equal. A second way to solve this problem is to write the negative 3 and 8 tenths as a fraction, 3 and 8 tenths, and get rid of the decimal there. Then I can cross multiply. 4 times 10 is negative 40, because the fraction on that side is negative, and 5 times 8 is negative 40. This is a second way to determine that they are, in fact, equal values. Let's compare negative 51 hundredths with 8 fifteenths. Make sure you always look at those signs first, because in this case we have a negative decimal and a positive fraction. A positive value is always greater than a negative value. No need to do any conversion to solve this one. We know automatically that negative 51 hundredths is less than positive 8 fifteenths. Next, let's order these values from least to greatest. They are all negative, so we're going to need to convert all of them to a common format. Probably the easiest thing to do is convert them all to decimals. Otherwise, we'd have to find a common denominator for all of the fractions and make those conversions. Negative 2 and 46 hundredths is already a decimal, so that one's fine. We would end up with negative 2.1 and I'm going to add on a zero, so it's to the hundredth spot, and negative 2 and 22 twenty-fifths becomes negative 2.88. Since these are negative values, I kind of have to think in reverse. A number line can be a handy tool. If we plot all three values on a number line, we can see that negative 2 and 88 hundredths is the smallest, and negative 2 and 1 tenth is the greatest. The final answer would be negative 2 and 22 twenty-fifths, followed by negative 2 and 46 hundredths, and finally negative 2 and 1 tenth. Let's do our final problem. At the end of the tadpole stage, a frog undergoes a metamorphosis in which its body makes a sudden transition into the adult form. This metamorphosis takes an average of 24 hours. The table below shows how many hours above or below average for four frogs making this transition. So we'll take a look at our table, and we have Sprocket, Bubbles, Frogmella, and Slimer, and the time of their metamorphosis compared to the average of 24 hours. We want to order them from greatest to least. If we take a look at our values, we have two that are positive and two that are negative. We're going from greatest to least, so let's pick out the positive values first. We have two and a half hours, and we have 1.6 hours. Two and one half hours is greatest, so that will go first, and that will be followed by 1.6. It's very easy to compare when they have different whole numbers. Next, let's take a look at the negative values. Negative 1 and 3 fifths, and negative 3 and 45 hundredths. Negative 1 and 3 fifths is just on the other side of 0, so that is going to be the third largest value. And finally, the smallest value of the group is going to be negative 3 and 45 hundredths hours. I guess Sprocket was quite a bit ahead of schedule. Well, Froganacci, that's really interesting. I had absolutely no idea that tadpoles transitioned into frogs so quickly like that. That sure is way faster than it takes for us humans to transition into adult form, isn't it? Well, math students, this concludes our lesson on comparing and ordering rational numbers, so we're going to wave bye for now.